What's going on everybody, Kidups here with your weekly update for Mega Man X5. So first off we have the global version. Uh, Lat M and E, you are going to get the Mega Man Legends event along with the banners for those characters which NA already had earlier uh, this, no, last year at this point. And then for the NA server, we're actually going to get Awaken Zero this week uh, as our new unit. So let's scroll down and take a little read here. Uh, this week, Mega Man X Dives needs to arrive Absolute Zero North America server. Uh, Mega Legend Lens and Light MEU 2 uh, debuted back in 21 November. Yep. That's when Neville Joy's once again all out with the free polls, which is always nice to see. So, right here, we have the details for the Absolute Zero banner uh, for the NA version. Uh, again, um, NA, or the NA server will be getting Absolute Zero alongside the Twin Fangs sword. The Twin Fangs is a melee weapon. And Absolute Zero is uh, is a character we're getting, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, first skill is Crimson N, performs a dash forward, uh, damaging all targets along the path. Uh, you are invulnerable to damage all that skills active. Second skill is Climatist Arts, which causes targets to become slow and reduce their movement speed when they Going on a little bit more is the event that we're going to get alongside Absolute Zero. I almost said Awakening Zero, that's how I called for a second. I yeah, that was Absolute Zero, a new event with its own stage and purchasable rewards will be available for one week in the NA server. It's called Core Chip Recycling Campaign. By playing this event and completing the missions, you will get coupons that will be later spent in the store to buy skip drive programs, skill points, present memory cards, Zenny, EXP programs, and the die trigger memories of Bounce Ball and Flash Ball. The last two are very, very important because we have not yet had an event to get those. The only way to get those is via events or maybe um, the, the monthly missions. Uh, I've seen them that way in the Taiwan version. That's how I've actually got mine in the Taiwan version. Uh, I didn't need enough members to unlock them, but from what I have gathered, the only way to get Bounce Ball and Flash Bomb are through, you know, special means like you can't get them normally. Some of the missions finishing all the difficulty, you will get EM. But finishing all the difficulty with S rank, you get coupons, but the majority of them will come from the JLE missions, which is always great to hear. So it's a lot easier to get the to get the coupons. To finish uh, the stage three times a day, but if you have absolute zero and twin fangs, you get even more coupons by completing the stage using them. They doesn't use any EP or any online rankings. In other words, when you're done completing all difficulty with S rank, the only thing you have to do is finish it three times a day. So as per usual, uh, it has a typical like event scheme. You have bonus characters and bonus weapons, like you get more, more, um, more rewards from the stage. So you get more coupons for exchanging, which is nice. And coming down here for the Lat M and EU service, going on the Rockman Dash event. Um, the banner is going to have Tron Bond, uh, Walnut, and a Heart of Gold. I'm not going to go too deep into this because I already went over this for NA for the event. Uh, and I'll actually leave a card here somewhere, somewhere on screen if you need to see uh, the the event being run in the NA server, uh, just because it will still help out Lat M and EU players. So, uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, when it comes to Gacha, the attraction is Tronbon, uh, Gustav, just like in Tronbon. You know, I'm not gonna go too much into the characters because I already went over these previously. But Tronbon has Gustav and Lunch Rush, but Lunch Rush is her one-tap skill. It can only be used when on the ground, though. And Gustav is her, like, her transformation skill. She boards a Gustav like she has in the Mission Adventures of Tronbon and Mega Man Legends 2, and then both of her skills change. Weapon changes to Bon Bazooka, be able to use Beacon Bombs. Um, and then you still keep Lunch Rush, so not I mean. And Mega Man Volnut will be available as well. Uh, you can get it from playing the event stage or through the gacha. Or like, like if your if your resource level is high enough, you could get uh, Mega Man Volnut memories from that and put them together via that way. And then yeah, all the way down here is the popularity pickup banner, and I actually really like this right here. One because I still don't have destructive laser, but two. For all servers during one week, the four popularity pickup banner with two characters and two weapons selected by the community will be available. Like the concept of this, like you just contact the community and say, hey, what are the most powerful, like which one of these units and weapons would you be the most likely to pull for? Community comes together, votes, and then this is what we get. Uh, caps will have increased our odds to get Awakened Zero Ultimate Armor X and the weapons Nightmare Destructive Laser, which is great. Uh, three out of the four weapons here are limited, and then the fourth one is just the best melee weapon. So. Um, you know, we have 
Nightmare Destructive Laser, Awaken Zero, and Ultimate Armor X. Ultimate Armor X and Awaken Zero are die fest units. Destructive Laser is a um, it's a limited time weapon that only appears on the weapon banners and then nightmares in the regular pool. But if you don't have it, you probably want it, which is most likely why these characters ended up on the popularity pickup. First free ten pull. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I gotta go back a little bit. You can use EM to pull for the caps or buy a 10 pull ticket for 10.99 from the store or take advantage of the free 20 pulls. The first free 10 pull will come from clearing one mission during the core chip recycling event. We need to complete difficulty three three stars in any server. Um, yeah, there's an any server long in bonus for the EU and Latam servers. So that's a bit interesting that they have different criteria for getting it. I guess it's because the NA and EU servers, I'm sorry, NA has been around longer? No, because I think EU, EU and Lightem are, aren't the same, you know, whatever. Uh, it's, it's just interesting that they went with two different approaches for, for getting them. And then the second one will be available on the seventh day login bonus for all servers. So as long as you're logging in at the very least daily, you'll get one free multi pool. Uh, you know, even if you can't complete a difficulty with three stars in NA. Um, but it's a login bonus for EU and Latin, which is still very nice. And there is one more thing that I wanted to cover for before moving on. And then the other thing I wanted to cover before moving on was that the Absolute Zero Bend is going to have a 250 pity instead of 200. Um, I don't know why that's happening, but it, it is. I couldn't tell you. I have no idea. Um... But if you wanted to pity Absolute Zero, uh, now might not be the best time to do that. Just because it's five extra pulls as opposed to the, the 200 that we are used to over in Global. Alright, and here we are on my Taiwan account on Steam. And it looks so much better on Steam than it did on Bluestacks, I just need to say that anyway so absolute zero let's take a look at his kit crimson end uh we already looked at the skills uh previously but um yeah he's crimson end forward dashing slash also in both claws damage all targets along the path in your immortal immortal blah, invulnerable to damage while this is active we have showtime so don't take any status effects we have mobility which is the prep time by 20 percent and we have restriction off. When you hit a target, you can use Crimson End again, but this effect can only be triggered once more after six seconds. So you will be able to spam, not, really, not necessarily spam Crimson End, but you know, you'll be able to use it continuously, right? So you go Crimson End, hit a target, you Crimson End again. And that's very, very nice. So over here we have Calamitous Art. No damage to all enemies in range of your attack, and then hit them with a fat stack of slow. 86%. So here we have a power increase, which is okay. We have absolute zero, which increases the duration of slow by one second, which can be huge in PvP. And we have cursed scars. When you hit a target, leave behind cursed scars on all targets within range and damage them. I can only make it triggered again by eight more seconds. Now, cursed scars probably doesn't sound like anything you recognize because that's in the rest of Zero's kit. So, what? what's up? Damage reduction resistance. The chance of becoming immune to damage reduction, which is actually very very important for um for absolute zero because he is a class kind of type character he can deal out a huge amount of damage but that's really all he can do like if he has no defense really in his kit so anyway over here it's curse scars you need to target with crimson end leave a scar on all targets within range and damage them so coming back over here uh, now you have access to leaving cursed scars behind on Calamitous Arts as well as Crimson End. So that's just more damage on things. Rampage, when your health is 25% or less, gain a damage enhanced status and a shield of invulnerability. This skill can be activated once per stage. So here is your the, what little defense Absolute Zero has in his kit. And allows you to essentially go on a rampage you know much like the skill implies or the path implies which is quite nice but it's only able to be triggered once per stage 
Over here we have Fury, when you hit an invulnerable target, gain a damage enhanced status, the enhanced damage you deal by 20%. This effect may be triggered when you hit a target with Crimson End as well, which that's also very, very nice that it might trigger when you hit a target with Crimson End. However, this effect will not work on targets that are immune to debuffs. I don't know if that works as intended because I know Absolute Zero said something to that effect, but Absolute Zero just doesn't care. <laughs> Absolute Zero Awakened Zero doesn't care, so I'm not sure if this this won't work on targets that are immune to status effects. So goes to ruin and increase the damage reg registration of Curse Scar. Or the, the damage registration of Curse Scar is accelerated by 35%. Blah. I don't know why I couldn't say that. Uh, but yeah, it just deals, allows Curse Scars to deal even more damage, which is a lot of damage. Anyway, um, I'll actually look at the DNA now as well, since we have the DNA in global. Uh, the character won't release with their DNA, but I figure it's worth talking about a little bit now, because it's coming soon anyway. We have mobility, which reduces the prep time for autonomous arts by 20%. Out of control, which increases the enhancement of rampage by 50%. Cannot be removed, which is nice, but rampage only... Rampage is only active once per stage when you're under 25%. That's also assuming that you don't get one tapped, right? Because if you get one tapped, it doesn't really do anything for you. Or like if you get brought from like 50% to 0% in one attack, it doesn't necessarily have to be a one tap, but like, you know, burst damage would also do that. And for wooden scars, increase the damage rate of cursed scars by 100% and cause the target you hit to be unable to use any skill. And that is just very, very nice. So it hits them with with no skill or skill seal, and they're unable, and uh, the damage rate is doubled. That's that's pretty nice. You can really deal out some some fat damage with absolute zero. But again, like I mentioned earlier, problem is he has like zero defense. So if you're if you're starting to side up a little bit, it's probably gonna last for a little while. And over here, we're going to look at the unique recombined DNA 5. When you equip two melee weapons at the same time, reduce damage taken by 10%. So over here, you finally have some mitigation, um, some decent mitigation, as well as, you know, you could stack it on with uh, some other things as well. But I figure that you probably are just going to go go uh, Aeon, which is all or nothing. So you're just going to go all in on damage and like not really worry about the defense. Although... Maybe you want to care a little bit just because of Rampage. All right, and here we have Command Mission Zero. I believe this card is in global already, um, but if it's not, uh, well, here is the card for Absolute Zero. We have Wrath. The vulnerability time of Rampage is extended to three seconds, which is, hmm, that actually isn't really very uh, reassuring. Off off the raw card is extended to three seconds, so. How long is invulnerability naturally? Is it one or two seconds? Um, that, again, that can still make a you know a relevant difference, but I went to three seconds. Um, I don't know what happened when he gets the five star, but and, and, I mean this is this is still worth worth having. Crisis amplification two, not bad at all. As ideally. Um, you, when you're in Rampage range, you will be dealing a lot of damage. And the last thing I can show is uh, I actually own the weapon this time on my Taiwan account, so I can talk about the Twin Fangs. So, coming down here to the skills. Inherently, we have Ice Fang, which, when you hit a target with a Jump Slash, gain enhanced defense status to reduce damage you take by... 14%, which you're going to have to take a cooldown. And we have Fire Fang. When hitting a target with a Dash Slash, you will enter Enhanced State of Damage. Uh, increase the damage dealt by 14% when we trigger by for after a 3 second cooldown. So that's not too bad. Uh, depending on which kind of Slash you use, you will be able to react offensively or defensively, which is kind of nice. Um, it's not Nightmare, though, so, I mean... Like... <laughs> Nightmare is just the best melee weapon for PvP. So he was in Pv um in PvE, I guess. Possibly, but there's I feel like I'd rather just use something else if I had it. Defense increase, which isn't bad. 
Uh, ultimate output increases the damage when the energy is below 10%. Or invisible 50% by 10%. We have Freezing Fang. Increase the duration of Ice Fang by 50% and reduce the cooldown time to 2 seconds. So, every 2 seconds you will have access to Ice Fang. And you will have a 21, or roughly a 21% increase in damage, which is quite nice. And the same thing for Burning Fang. Or for Fire Fang, uh, with Burning Fang. So, reduced to a 2 second cooldown, and you'll have a 21% increase in damage off that. And for the hidden skills, we have High Speed Recharge. We have Dash Slash. Leaping Blade. And Twin Fangs. Um, I'm not sure which one of these I would like to, to go with, to be honest. Uh, High Speed Recharge is probably the best one to go to. Um, as it will increase your, your recharge speed by 25%, so in theory, you shouldn't run out of energy that way. You get a spam dash slash that way. Uh, dash slash might be usable as well, but I think, I think high speed recharge is probably the best one to go with. As you won't run out of energy and you'll be able to stay below the, stay within the ultimate output range. And even if you even if you did run out of energy with it, you'll have more uptime because you re replenish energy faster with with this. So I I do think that this is probably the best one to have access to. All right, and for the the Taiwan version update for this week, um, we already knew that the Taiwan version getting a rerun of the Monster Hunter event, but we're getting new units and a new event stage as well. I have not watched any of these trailers yet, so I am completely in the dark about what's going to be in them. I do, however, know of the two units as they were um, they were shown previously prior to these trailers going out. We have, for those of you that are you know aware of Monster Hunter, we have Crimson Valstrax Armor Zero, and we have uh, Zenogre Armor Iris. So first, we're going to watch the Crimson Armor Zero video. All right, and let's take a look at the Crimson Valstrax Zero. I like the intro. Intro is very, very apt for Valstrax, for Crimson Glow Valstrax. The armor looks really, really nice too. Okay, I wonder if we're gonna have that attack as well available to us. Let's see Crimson Glow, shoot huge and meme of these several energy projectiles. Okay, that's pretty cool, Crimson Glow. Apt to as the Valstrax uses that as well. From a dash and summon evil star to burst and deal damage to enemies. Okay, so that's just like the, um... Burns our support needed to shrine, okay. Switch between attack, defense, and speed enhance that is according to your needs. Okay, hold on, but what is that? Oh, there's a lot of stuff I want to know about this, but <laughs> we're not gonna get all be able to extrapolate all that information just from the trailer. Okay. So that's it for that. Now let's take a look at Zenogre Iris. And I do like Zenogre as a monster too, so let me turn this up a little bit. I don't know why Iris's hair is glowing as well. That really threw me off. I could I didn't know she was Iris at first. I mean I guess it makes sense because of how Zenogre uh can charge itself up, I guess. And a roar unleashes a column of laser beams that will ignore terrain and will increase uh, mobility on the target. Okay. Force electrocution continuously inflict damage to all targets in range or release several additional laser orbs that will ignore terrain and have it. Oh, the, the laser orbs. Okay. So the, <laughs> the little thunder bugs that Zenoga releases. Okay. Although it seems. Hold on. I also kind of like it because like it seems like they're keeping like Iris's minds to an extent uh, slightly involved in this with the um, with the Thunderbug so she releases. So that's pretty neat. All right, so now let's take a look at the urgent support needed at the Shrine Ruins. Based off of what we've seen previously and like the promotional art, I can only assume that it is a Sting Chameleon 
trust that as a chameleos, and I don't like finding stink chameleon, so let's hope. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's unlucky. So the shrine ruins. Okay, we have the wire book mechanic back, as you would expect. Oh, it's a Tiggy! Tigrex. Cool. Got for invisible enemies. I mean, Sting Chameleon? Wait, that didn't look like the, bo the end of the boss stage. Show. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Okay, first of all, you can't give me that small of a, of a teaser. Stop. Stop, 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 stop. But, like, look at this. Because, like, th th there's a door you enter from, but there's, like, another door behind it. What does that mean? It says, watch out for invisible enemies. It also uses enemies as in plural. Oh, I don't like the poison. No. Not the not the meatball spray from Camellios. No, not like this. Like the shrine ruins, uh, though. All right. Well, I guess that's it for this update. Um, yeah, I'm actually really, I'm looking, really looking forward to the Monster Hunter event in the Taiwan server for this week. Uh, it'll be starting tomorrow by the time this video is uploaded, along with the other stuff that's going live for Global. I wanted to wait a little bit to make sure everything was out, because because sometimes I will record, or, you know, I'll record all these update videos and more stuff will come out. Um, and just actually before I sat down to start recording this one was when the X Dive Twitter tweeted out that the Awakened Zero, or... Um, Absolute Zero is going to have in, in a higher pity for this uh, this banner. So it's really, really good I waited for that just to let people know about that before in case they didn't see the tweet. Anyway, that's going to be it for uh, this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps the channel. It helps me grow. It helps me enjoy the content. And let me know down below uh, what you're looking forward to uh, this week in either server. Um, you know, if you're playing Taiwan, Global, NA, EU. Uh, all that stuff, and I will see you guys next time. Later.